Hello everybody, my name is Aaron and today we're going to be looking at the 60 volts 2.5 amp hour Craftsman battery. So what do we know just from the name, the title, the blah, is that it is at least 15 batteries in series and it's 2.5 milliamp, milliamps each. So that's a given. Now I doubt there is two rows of 15 in here, there's no way. So it's pretty easy to get into these things. You need one of these, um, what is this, a bit, security bit. And there's about eight screws all around and then bam, everything just pops off. Now, I got these things on sale, clearance, for like 40 bucks, which apparently is a really good deal. So I decided to risk it for a biscuit and show you what the insides of these things look like and see what you're actually getting into when it comes to one of these units. So right off the bat, I have one bar or one light on my charge this thing is getting low so i don't want to plug it into anything and use it i actually don't have a charger for this let's pop this guy out of the there we go so we have slots divots for the battery to sit in this is your battery 15 in series look at that now you have a couple of interesting things that you notice right off the bat because you are very observant and a freaking legend this battery is soldered to the board. We have solders coming down and connecting these, but then we have another one that starts on the board. So what I did is I went ahead and did some um, science things. I went ahead and mapped out what's going on here. So we have three battery banks in one. There's five batteries here, five batteries here, and five batteries here. It's actually more apparent if you look, there's a fuse, a fuse, and another fuse. There'd be no three fuses if this was all acting as one big battery. So um, if you haven't clued in yet, this is not one 60 volt battery. This is three 20 volt batteries, which is exactly like this one. That is a Duramax 20 volt from like 2013. I also got a butt ton of those on sale. Uh, they are... There's 10 batteries inside, and this is a BMS, battery management system. This chip is a battery management system. Not all batteries have the battery management system chip on the battery. Most of them have the battery management system chip on the charger, which in turn charges and manages the battery to full charge. And then all of the accessories, the drills, the saws, they're all only made to go down in voltage to a certain spot and then they'll turn it off. But this one has it in the battery pack and this one has a weird whopping one in the battery pack as well. So this battery is three of this battery. So we have, so you have five in series, five in series, five in series. They equal right now, because this charge is a little bit low, 17.345-ish as we go down the line for each of the packs, the mini packs in here. So we're looking at three batteries in one. Now, I'm trying to figure out if this is a BMS or if the BMS is in the charger like all the other cheap battery packs. Well, let's take a look at the pinouts. So this is what I've gathered via an ohms meter and it's quite interesting. We have eight pins. There are seven double pins, as you can see, and one one pin, or a key, if you will. So these double pins are not separated in any way. They are one solid piece. They just have a double clamp for some reason. But if you look at the diagram here, we have an interesting layout of voltages. I did every pin to every pin and wrote down what I saw. So what I did before I even got into any any uh, electrical readings was went in and charged this first single battery higher than the rest. Then I did it to here and I left this one where it's at. Why did I do that? Because what that did is created three mini battery packs at 17.5, 17.4, 17.3. And so I knew which pin was doing what when I read the voltage off of them from these eight pins. So we're dealing with B1, B2, B3 for our battery, mini battery packs, and that's what I've named them. And what I figured out is B1 is these inner two pins, and that is the positive one. So we're looking at right here, these two right there. Now, B2 
these two external ones, and B3, these two external ones. Now, what's very, very interesting is I get the same reading of 12.7 on each one of these three pins going here, and this acts as the negative for these three pins. Then I get an odd 25.3, which would be two of these 12.7s right here, right? That acts, acts as a negative. And I get a 12.6 right here acting as a negative. So something, something's going on here. So the best that I can figure out is this, ladies and gentlemen, is this battery is very, very versatile. It has its own BMS system in it. And when you charge it, you're charging it as if it's three separate 20 volt batteries by putting a 20 volt charge over the three mini batteries, okay? So now that we've established that the charging is done all on this PCB, that's what I've distilled so far. Um, how is this a 60 volt battery pack if you only ever see 17 volts? Once again, I did every pin to every pin and I never saw 60 volts anywhere. How? How is that even possible? How does this work? So what is happening is this battery pack, they want to make it as versatile as possible. They made it so that the thing you are plugging this into decides how much voltage it's grabbing. Okay? So if I were to connect the B1 positive to the B2 negative in my saw that I've plugged this thing into, I would now get two 17 volt packs or two, so ostensibly 40 volts if I seriesed them inside the saw. Then if I added the B3 pack, I would now have 60 volts. So inside of your tool, your lawnmower, whatever, there is circuitry which connects these mini battery packs into 60 volt series. Boom. But as it's being charged, it's only ever sent 20 volts, but it's sent 20 volts three times to charge it. Now these 12 volt situations, that's kind of interesting. Is that this battery's ability to be plugged into a lower voltage tool? Maybe these are series that are set up to be a different multiple, uh, 12 times 12 plus 12 plus 12, right? You're looking at 36 volt, 36 to 40 volts. It's a very common voltage and you don't want to be only pulling voltage from two battery banks at once. You always want to be pulling voltage from all three if possible. So curious if these 12 volt lines right here are all set up to give this battery versatility to go into lower voltage units and still be able to perform and discharge all three batteries at once. I don't know what that 25 volt thing's doing, no idea. What you will notice is these metal pads around the top. Now, I spent 15 minutes doing voltage across each one of these pins and there is a crap ton of voltages being thrown around here. There is voltages for a single cell. There's a voltage. There's a voltage from here all the way up to the top for 12 volts, and then it goes 10 volts, and then over here it's 10. And I have no idea what the crap's going on with these pads because when you put the cover on, these pads are never touched. You can't touch them. So the only thing I can conclude is this battery uh, PCB was set up so that it could be easily tested. If you knew what these two were, bam, okay, it's that cell that's fried, let's fix it. It's very clear that Craftsman was setting this thing up to have a very long runtime in the marketplace and to be supported by a lot of units. But considering that I got three or four of these puppies for 40 bucks, it seems like that has run its course. I was going to use this in a scooter as a BMS, to help the batteries. I don't think I'll be using that now simply because of the weird structure of the triple battery bank that's set up in here. I'm not too excited about trying to maneuver my way around this odd BMS. I would rather find a 60 volt battery pack that only has four pins coming out of it instead of eight 
And those four pins, like this setup right here, is positive, negative, and then sense pins or temperature pins, whatever these two are. So that way, if there's four pins on your battery pack, it has its own internal BMS. If there's more than four and you're sitting somewhere around eight on this massive thing, there's some odd calculation thing going on here. Almost useless unless you want to spend a ton of time and could cook it. But for the price that these things are, I doubt you want to do that. So the inside of this battery pack, very, very interesting. And that is all that I have figured out so far. If you want to use this for anything else, let me know how it went for you. If you want to see more, make sure you hit up the channel. I'm building lots of lithium ion battery packs. I'm doing a bunch of videos on it and we are learning quite a bit. I've already got a hub motor for an electric motorbike happening. It's, there, there's a lot coming down the line. So make sure you subscribe and we will see you on the next one. Ciao.